episode. What number episode is this? Good question. I think it's uh, episode 33. All right. Another episode, episode 33 of Escapist Corner. Escapist. Escapist. <laughs> <laughs> um, today we have kind of a controversial, maybe, um, topic about um, fitness apps. Trash talk. <laughs> it, might be, it might become a trash talk. Um, yeah. The, the fitness app and the kind of the emergence of them and, and, how, um, and how popular they've become in, you know, in the last few years. And uh, so we were going to take a, a dive into that today. To, uh, to to not necessarily pick a lane, but to explore all aspects of what they are, what they serve, who they serve. Yeah, sorry, I'm just mm -hmm. uh, thinking about mm -hmm. between two ferns again. <laughs> 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 I was just thinking, what would uh, Zach, uh, uh, how, how would he attack this? Like, what would his angle be on this topic? <laughs> he's so smart, and he's so funny, and I think, I don't know, I think maybe he would first attack fitness altogether, and... Because um, he always makes the, the other, the counterpart, very, very uncomfortable. Right, too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, long pauses, long stares, yeah. I think his first question would be, what, what is fitness? Fitness. Fitness. <laughs> how, how do you pronounce it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, so we're, we're talking fitness apps. Um, and uh, I, I guess the very, like, on the, um, on the top of the mind for many. So, um, yeah, why not? take a deep dive into what is actually a uh, fitness apps and so on. Um, and uh, yeah, I think the question of what is fitness also kind of uh, should be spoken about yeah. in this. Um, but I, I, uh, I think like the background to this comes from <coughs> where we, uh, I don't know, I, I had this idea of uh, talking about Peloton, yeah, and uh, uh, it just happens to be that you are a Peloton subscriber, mm -hmm. and uh, I know of uh, plenty of other people that are Peloton subscribers, mm -hmm. and uh, I am non-subscriber of it, uh, but uh, I definitely uh, would like to talk about it because I think it is uh, interesting. Yeah, it certainly is. Um, I subscribed to Peloton, Peloton, however you want to pronounce it, uh, back in... Peloton. <laughs> How would the Swedish pronounce it? Uh, Peloton. Okay. Okay, cool. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I subscribed to it first in March. Actually, they, they had, it was really quite generous of them, is they were um, giving away a it was like a 90 day free trial um, because of the quarantine, the first lockdown, um, kind of like worldwide, I guess. And uh, so I, I had a spin bike at home. I didn't have a Peloton bike, but I had a kind of just a run of the spin, spin bike um, with, you know, you could change the resistance. And so I started doing the classes and I, I you know, I, I figured out the app. It's very intuitive. You can choose the kind of class you want so whether you want something that's more hit you want something that's more endurance you want like a tabata ride you want a cool down ride you want you know um, a threshold ride um, there, there's quite a few options you can also choose the length of the ride so you can choose 20 40 60 minute ride um, uh, you can choose your instructor you can choose the kind of music that you want. So you have so many options, what fits you. That was really cool for me. Um, 
And so I kind of started doing these, you know, either the 20 minute class or the 30 minute class, class either a Tabata ride or a, like a climb ride. And um, I really like them, you know, there's a huge array of, of um, trainers on the bike. So, you know, male, female, um, different- Gorillas. Gorillas. Yeah, um, they like to think they're gorillas, I don't know, but, um, they, you know, you can kind of find the ones that, you know, you like and how they talk and how they kind of motivate. Some are over the top, some are super boring, some are just irritating, some are super motivating, and um, I kind of found a couple that I liked, so I would continue to, you know, do those classes, and um, I found myself kind of doing the same 20 minute ride almost every single day just because it was it it was what I needed to get my heart rate up and I was done done with it. So you were skipping. Yeah, and um, I mean so there is a lot of variety. Um, you know, they have, you know, all the most current music or 80s music or 90s, whatever you want. Um, as somebody that has done a lot of spinning in the past, um, you know, I didn't find it like earth shattering. Um, the thing that separated me though was because I didn't have the bike, I wasn't on, you know, I, I wasn't on like the leaderboard. They don't see me. So one thing with Peloton is that, you, you know, when you buy, when you subscribe and you buy the bike and I don't know, I, I'm thinking now that they sell, you know, like heart rate gadgets and everything else, um, they, monitor you and in the classes in the live classes they shout out to you you know so like oh you know Rebecca 3000 you know in Berlin you know top the leaderboard so I mean you that that's kind of cool for some people I guess um, to, to have that recognition um, but I was doing it purely just to get my cardio in yeah, it's pretty interesting with this thing that you said you ended up doing basically the same thing all the time. Yeah. Um, and uh, I think it's um, like one one big learning thing from this online training that we've been doing is um, that people at home tend to do want to have it more simple. Mm -hmm. Like yeah. if it gets too complicated and someone kind of demotivates you. Yeah. And like the un unexpected is rather like unwanted right. um, you don't want to have like a you know your challenge uh, you know it, there's a lot of things like moving things in your uh, everyday yeah. life and at home or whatever at work and then you need to kind of handle the unknown in the, in the workout uh, at home too mm -hmm. it works at the gym or like in the crossfit box because you, you just have to show up and yeah. the rest is kind of it's taken care of but at home, when you have to kind of do that by yourself, yeah, it's just, it's uh, demotivating. I just know a couple of people that want to have a lot of variation, but most people just want to have like almost a stable schedule. So it's rather like, it's a lot of convincing in one sense that we need to maybe have at least three different things we're going to work on. And then we repeat those every week and kind of have small progressions on Mondays and Tuesdays and Thursdays. Whatever. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm just going to do a small hack because I, uh, I recognize that the fan is on in two seconds. Did I miss anything? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it's freakishly loud. I, I, you don't realize when you're here all the time, it's just yeah, yeah. so much noise. Um, and that's a trend. Um, so, yeah, what, what, um, what did we have on the agenda on these? Well, I thought that we would, you know, you know from kind of just to piggyback off of what we just talked about, um, to kind of look at, you know, maybe, you know, okay, there's Peloton and then 
on top of that, um, because that is, I mean, that is, is such a commitment, um, you know, to buy the bike, I believe it's about, you know, three grand, and then you're also buying, just for, for the bike, and then you're also buying, um, you know, the, the subscription, and I'm sure more add-ons and add-ons and add-ons. And, and I don't know, but I, I have heard something that they're adding a nutrition program. So, you know, it's this kind of constant, you know, sell, 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 right? right? Um, and, you know, add more programs on top of programs. So, um, but I mean, the initial um, uh, idea behind it was, was the bike. And now they have running yoga, stretching, hit, so you can choose different workouts. Yeah, so I heard from the CEO of uh, Pelican, I mean, there are, there are like five or six founders. Mm -hmm. They actually started, or they, they don't see themselves as a equipment company, but rather a, like an entertainment com company. Mm -hmm. And they want to see themselves more like Netflix or Spotify, subscription model, Based in that sense that you pay for um, this kind of uh, experience mm -hmm. and they they put all their um, effort into having those uh, like great experiences and um, it comes down to like like the equipment has to be in some certain way uh, for sure and then you have the uh, as you talked about like the instructors mm -hmm. and I think that is also a key distinction what I see between, uh, let's say, uh, CrossFit and something like Peloton is that uh, in in these kind of uh, hit facilities, um, uh, very boot camp or in this uh, uh, Peloton, for example, you have instructors, um, which is a lot about you know motivation, uh, being a happy spirit, and so on. Super important, I think. That's something like a lot of CrossFit coaches also should learn from mm -hmm. to uh, be, you know, much more, you know, happy mm -hmm. <laughs> and much more positive and mm -hmm. and helpful and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, and combine that with coaching. Mm -hmm. Well, in Peloton, you're not having, there's no coaching going on, really. Uh, and um, uh, like in, in CrossFit too, in one sense, if you... If you have a big ass group and um, the coach is saying motivational things, that is also not really coaching. It's more of a like a motivational, yeah, it, yeah. It's uh, yeah. so it, it's on the spectrum somewhere, but um, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think they, you know, the 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 Peloton coaches or or that in that in that world, it's like they're cheerleaders. Yeah. Um, so you don't have that individuality, right? Um, you, you know, the, they might shout your name out, you know, oh, this is, you know, her 3,000th ride or whatever. Mm. Fantastic. <clears throat> but they're cheerleaders. Mm. And they can, you know, say the best words and, and you know, string the best kind of sentences together to, to make you feel, you know, pumped. Mm. Um that really only goes so far. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but again, I think it's super important for, for, you know, coaches also, not only CrossFit coaches, but like any coaches, if you're a weightlifting coach or so on, you need to be also knowing mm -hmm. how to, um, you know, it comes down to how, how do you help anyone? Right. It, how, it might be motivation and so on, but this kind of also kind of distinguishes a bit more into what kind of person you are and what kind of um, uh, coach or instructor you want to have, right? Yeah. So that's why people are picking these different instructor, uh, instructors on Peloton, like, I don't like that guy, I like this one, I like, uh, I want that in my language. And, right. Um, yeah. So everyone can have their kind of favorite avatar yeah. uh, instructor. And yeah, it comes down to that, like, you need to uh, be... Um, yeah, have your, your group that you 
adhere to and yeah. can adhere to you, but also as if you now look at the distinction between the instructor and the coach is that a coach uh, can be could could uh, actually be doing uh, can approach everyone more on an individual basis, so mm -hmm. you can be more uh, instructor to uh, one person, but you can be much more subtle and right. coaching um, on each other. Yeah. So uh, we see this on like different kind of athletes. Is some athletes are have no problems with their motivation. Uh, they don't need, uh, you know, they don't need any motivational uh, jabber. Mm -hmm. But for some other people, they're super unmotivated, and yeah. they need a lot of motivation. Yeah. And you have uh, people that are super um, communicative, and they really want to have coaching, mm -hmm. and and they they they're coachable. They communicate that like, I, show me how to do this, or like, did I do that right, and, and so on, and and constantly looking for feedback. And then you have others that are the opposite. They don't want to do that. And uh, we, as a coach, it's always you have to find still find a way to coach. And um, um, I guess um, if, if we look at like um, the fitness apps, it's obviously uh, something that is going to be hard for fitness apps to do. Mm -hmm. um, and I definitely see that like doing the online personal training. It is it's a different type of coaching for yeah. sure. And, and so on. There are many things that you can implement to enhance the experience and then also like trying to figure out better ways all the time mm -hmm. um but um for the peloton uh, i saw this meme uh of peloton which i i don't know if it's going to be true or not but it's um it was a gym uh, like a home gym that everyone bought in the 80s 90s with mm -hmm. some a pulley and something uh you know where you could they basically do lap poles and some uh, leg curls and stuff like that. Usually, like fitted in into a corner in, in the apartment or house. Mm -hmm. And um, um, in this picture, you had this home gym, or if it was a treadmill, um, and it was just full with laundry. Like people, or the, the person had just put all the laundry for for drying yeah. uh, on that home gym because yeah. that is kind of where it ends up. Uh, at the end, yeah. Um, for the home gym owners, the adherence has been like super low. So people are super motivated; they're buying treadmills and stuff like that, and then um, the motivation just drops uh, right. immediately after they bought the equipment. And um, um, now for Peloton, uh, it might be a bit different because of this the entertainment component. Uh, so I'm super. churn or something like that which is incredibly low for mm -hmm. a fitness app yeah i mean i think you know at every point in our life we've all you know bought some kind of like little fitness gadget and it you know it generally ends up under the bed right and we mm -hmm. you know find a way to get rid of it or sell it or you know leave it in the apartment when you move but um but i think you know what what a lot of the fitness apps are doing now is um it's kind of like a, like a game mm. so um you know there are great incentives so like i think the leaderboard is really genius um because some people really want that yeah. you know they want that kind of recognition and it's kind of cool that it's i i, I have a, a girlfriend of mine who when she got her bike she told me it was like in the first week that she had it her she you know um her name was shouted out right yeah. in some studio in like new jersey right where they do the filming yeah. um and she just thought that that was just so cool you know when other people around the world heard her you know her screen name right <laughs> um and that excited her so I mean, it's like, who am I or who are we to say that, you know, that's a, it's a bad thing, right? It, yeah. it lifts somebody's spirits. Um, 
but I think, you know, the idea that, like, you know, a game will kind of, it's like Monopoly, right? It's all exciting in, in the beginning, and you play it, and you play it, and you play it, and you got all the pieces, and then you start, you know, kind of, like, toward, like, the middle end. It's like you stop the game for the night, and yeah. then you decide to play maybe a little bit later, but it's like it, it wears off, mm. right? And um, I guess the question is, is, like, how do you keep something like that when it's fitness related? How do you keep that kind of that motivation? How, what is it about the incentive that will keep you on the bike every day? You know, even if it's a 20 or 30 minute class. Um, why, um, why are prizes so valuable to people? Yeah, I, I think, I mean, the, the gaming implication is is obvious in these uh, apps mm -hmm. uh, that they are super important and uh, just like in, in CrossFit in one sense for some, for some people it, it is the leaderboard is really the uh, like the gimmick gamification that really pushes people to you know do a bit more and uh, I think there's some there's something healthy and good in this kind of uh, constant small competition mm -hmm. um, doesn't have to you know I, I, I mean I see this from from the perspective of being like a playing ice hockey uh, for you know over 20 years and <clears throat> being playing like very tough games where you're beating shit out of each other basically you can be on the ice and you're you're you need to be in the mindset of you need to kill the other person right mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, you're not allowed to uh, to strangle or you know do these things, but with the allowed you know measures like uh, a tackling and so on, you're really definitely trying to kill the other person. Right. Um, and because that's the level of in, of intensity you have to put into it. Yeah. Um, so there's a lot of like adrenaline. You have all this like key points energy into uh, the tackling or grappling or whatever and um, the other person is tr obviously trying to do the same to you so you you are you know under a lot of pressure and um, however as soon as the signal is over like 60 minutes of game is over mm -hmm. one team won one team lost mm -hmm. um, you can go out to a bar and have a beer and uh, be best friends right and um, there's like this healthy part of competition and then there's the unhealthy part where you uh, after the game can't shut, shut off the leaderboard right but you you're still looking at how can I manipulate this uh, sucker outside outside the game yeah and um, I mean uh, you can do that. I mean, you do that before the game usually because mm -hmm. the game starts before you're on the ice. Um, so yeah, it depends on how far, uh, how far in front of the game you start with the manipulation. But, um, but usually, like the, the the key here is simply that there's healthy competition where you really push yourself to the limit, to the edge mm -hmm. of all, almost your survival instinct to mm -hmm. come out. Yeah. But then to be able to shut that off and mm -hmm. and understand that this is this is something I do for uh, for fun too. It's not just you know, it's not the end of the world if I lose this game. Right. Um. I, I'll be better tomorrow. Yeah. And uh, um, I think like the 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 problem might be for someone who's uh, into these apps and so on. They get too frustrated in in the leaderboard and yeah. in the competition so uh, that can be like a negative part of it but um, I think for most people it's just to see your, your name there it's going to be super important and see that you went from 35th to 34th percentile right. makes a huge difference um, so um, yeah it, it keeps you kind of going but I think that's a super good good thing and I think also something for many CrossFit like ours uh, also to maybe look into and be better at you know 
understanding the psychology of that, yeah. making someone a bit more motivated just by knowing that your number is better. Right. Most people are too lazy to do this by themselves, so the app or the gym or so on might be to uh, facilitate that. Yeah. To show your number is actually what's quite systemic. Uh, I've had this like uh, also in discussions with with members that don't feel progress and and so on so you need to show them and like here i have your numbers here yeah like your your workout last month or last year you, you needed 15 minutes now it's like five minutes right. that's a huge difference yeah and um but yeah being much more in front of uh person with those numbers can be um important for us mm -hmm. to understand yeah absolutely so i'm just wondering like in your opinion, what kind of people, and it doesn't have to necessarily just mean be exclusive to Peloton, because like in reality, like a lot of people can't afford a $3,000 bike or don't have like the room for it, you know, in their house or whatever. Um, so kind of like in general, these fitness apps, like what, who do you think is kind of the, the, the typical person buying into these apps um to start with this uh, early ad adapters um i'm i don't think i'm one of those mm -hmm. um but yeah er early adapters for sure and uh, that means um, these early adapters they usually you know they can be celebrities and so on and then kind of the the masses start to adapt mm -hmm. to it um, but yeah, I mean, Peloton, they've done their market research, so they, they know that people that have a certain income, they say uh, 1,800 euros or something like that, uh, net income, uh, that's kind of like their, uh, their uh, customer uh, and up above. And that might be surprising for some people that um, it seems for some, for some people it's like a luxury product mm -hmm. and they are basically saying no it's not a luxury product it's a it's for the masses and uh, yeah maybe three thousand euros is a lot but again with the subscription model and so on people are paying already like for memberships and so on um now i don't know if if uh this uh if the if peloton just is uh overestimating the german market mm. and and they are comparing that to like American market uh, too much might be the case but um, I mean they've done their research they know that you know 10% uh, of German households have uh, like a, a treadmill right. or something at home yeah that's uh, like the, yeah you know, yeah um, I think they they know that I mean it can be something for the masses and um, I think the the, the in interesting part for as I see this, like, uh, I don't see this as competition for, like, a CrossFit gym or so on. Um, I see this as a, it's a, like, a great warm-up mm -hmm. yeah. to yeah. actually getting started with yeah. fitness, getting into uh, CrossFit, but also maybe the opposite. Like, you, you use CrossFit to actually be the best on the, the leaderboard on, <laughs> on Peloton, maybe. Right. Um, and uh, you kind of have more data points to build it that you can uh, look at. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, I think I also, I guess the thing that comes down to with, with most of these like spin apps and so on is that <coughs> uh, it, is, it is a part of fitness, but it's not fitness. It's, uh, uh, it's usually uh, in, you're usually just working on one domain yeah. in, in uh, fitness, meaning m mostly endurance yeah. and uh, cardiovascular uh, endurance. And and I mean, that, that is great to have to do cardio, mm -hmm. um, but I'm, uh, I think the perception of fitness is something a bit, uh, I would say, narrow for most people. Mm -hmm. they, they no longer understand this. Uh, too much they don't understand that you know from being on a spinning bike all, all day it's not going to actually make you that much fitter it's going to make have you make you you know have more endurance mm -hmm. uh, there 
there are some like great benefits to that, but you're not actually getting so much stronger and because you're not really working on your maximum strength at all. Right. Um, you're, um, you're not working on like your balance, your coordination. Um, and, you know, a lot of the neural uh, logical uh, enhancements and so on were not uh, uh, used. Yeah, yeah. And this is also might be uh, one reason why many people fall off the wagon in a, after a while because it's not really challenging for your mind. Right. You're, you're not developing uh, as a full human yeah. creature. Yeah. Um, and one other argument I would say also with this constant um, like endurance thing is that uh, uh, from an evolution evolutionary perspective, um, we, we are built to have endurance and having better endurance makes us recover faster. Um, but we're, we're built for more quick burst quick burst, uh, full out things, and uh, combining that with some endurance, kind of. Right. Uh, but having like a prolonged, uh, elevated heart rate, mm -hmm. uh, it's not, uh, it's not good. Right. Like that's why your pulse gets lower uh, because the body's trying to adapt. So mm -hmm. you your heart rate doesn't go in the, into the roof because mm -hmm. that's not good to yeah. have that prolonged. And having prolonged heart rate all the time is actually gonna, you know, damage uh, tissue. And mm -hmm. so it's it's like this constant um, battle in the in the body where you need to stretch the body and then pull back, stretch right. the body, pull back. But if you're constantly stressing, that's what happening with uh, insulin resistance, like diabetes, and so on. If you're constantly uh, pushing the body with uh, the, the insulin yeah. and after a while, the body just wears out. Yeah. Same thing with a lot of cardio. You're constantly push, 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 and the 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 blood vessels and everything will start to wear out. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, same thing with weight weightlifting. Like if you're doing weightlifting, weightlifting, weightlifting all the time, your joints will wear out. Yeah. Uh, you do gymnastics, 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 gymnastics all the time. Well. Why does uh, all the gymna gymnasts end up broken? Because they, they, tear, they wear their joints out. Right. Um, and if you are competing, you want to get to the Olympic Games. That's what's needed, because that's where you test the ultimate limit, limit of human performance. Right. Um, and, uh, you know, there's a place for that in, you know, human capacity to understand ourselves and, and so on. But um it's not health uh, yeah. if we put it in that context yeah but well i think and all the the points that you brought up maybe kind of hone in on one thought is that you know when you when you do get on a spinning bike it's like you can just shut off you can shut off your brain yeah um and you know all you have to do is pedal and know your left and right you know which way to turn mm. the knob um and uh, and so yeah, your 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 heart pumping, but your brain is completely shut off. And something that I just related it to, and I think we I was talking to one of our coaches, Mark, about it, is that you know sometimes, um, you know, in certain workouts that we do here, there's like an element of math, <laughs> which I have found, yeah. you know, add three reps every every round, and it's like well, so you're kind of you're. Your, your heart's racing, your body's moving, and your brain is so activated. And it's like this, this um, I don't know if like in the, the beginning, the formation of CrossFit, if like this kind of, you know, brain function in that capacity was also considered when Greg Glassman was, you know, mm. formulating all these workouts or this style. Um, so, there is that aspect to it of, you know, I do have to think while I'm training, yeah. even adding, you know, okay, so then my score is, you know, you have to sit and count. Yeah. And so, I mean, even if, even if it's, if it's basic, there is still functioning, yeah. you know, you're still thinking. I, uh, I, I usually say this in, in uh, many of our 
workouts, I tell them, because people, when they start with CrossFit, at least many are like, well, how, how am I supposed to remember that? Th that's and, what and, I mean. And, and like yeah. the, that rep scheme or so on, and for me, it's like, what are you talking about? It's like 10 to 1. Right. It's like, can't you count down from 10? <laughs> <laughs> and, and I usually say this with a you know a bit of a um, um, yeah what do you say not laugh in my eye but yeah you get my point mm -hmm. um, a sarcastic eye roll no 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 <laughs> but just I say this is like the the James part of the work and uh, James Bond part of CrossFit okay where you have to do action and and think at the same time yeah you know. Yeah. Um, do some calculations and so on and as you said it's like really basic maths <laughs> uh, it's not super super hard um, but I, I think this is also the like why the military and uh, and so on really like to, uh, to implement this for their forces is because you have this element of constantly variation mm -hmm. which means you can shut down your brain right. and this is kind of what you want to practice on someone who is in a high alert state to be you know m alert yeah but still being able to work mm -hmm. and you know put some effort and move move the weights or run or whatever but still be you know functioning yeah not being uh just turning turning off yeah and uh, like understand correctly also with um when it comes to when you know if, if it's peloton if, if you're running or so on and you you want to turn off uh, I definitely don't see any uh, bad thing in that it's it's the same it's uh, like a bit like meditation yeah. right so um, but what I'm saying is that you can you can peloton all, all you want but it's probably not going to solve uh, all of your issues mm -hmm. um, meaning um, like if you have you know back issues you have shoulder issues so on those things will probably just get worse yeah and this is uh, like the common thing for many that come from you know cycling and free triathlon and stuff like that is that their their bodies are even deformed mm -hmm. from from the posture you have on, mm -hmm. on those uh, bikes and so on yeah and um yeah and again because most people don't understand what is actually normal um, they just think being fit is is being able to run a marathon right but yeah in my opinion to be fit is to be able to also you know have full range of motion in, in your your shoulders and in your knees and your hips you should be able to squat you should be able to overhead and so on and it's not important because we do this in CrossFit but it's important because of uh, if you can do it you will not have problems that's, right. that's, that's the point like if you can if you have full range of motion in your shoulder you're not going to have shoulder and neck issues mm -hmm. uh, if you can squat at the grass you're not going to have problems with your lower back and, and mm -hmm. your knees right. and stuff, stuff like that so um, that's that's the key uh, when I say that it's, uh, it's not because you you know I don't think you everyone has to be able to uh, do 150 kilos over squats uh, to be healthy but you know just being able to squat all the way down yeah and um, you know carry your body weight overhead uh, it's just gonna make you give you much more op options right. and you're not gonna have as I said like difficulties in other parts of your life um, and you know if you're able to run a marathon on top of that that's great <laughs> yeah yeah absolutely so talking about like all of these apps and um, given you know kind of like the time that we're in right now where there's you know a lot shut down we're shut down um, you know, these apps are kind of what people are kind of grasping onto because at least, you know, you can, you can work out in your home. Mm -hmm. Um, <clears throat> the, the, you know, the research that I've done about, you know, 
um, moving away from Peloton for a second, but looking at kind of these ones that are extremely popular right now. Like there's a girl, I don't know, I can't remember her name. Terry Chris? No. <laughs> it's yeah. famous girl. I, I, I have at least 50% chance to. Kara, <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's in this or something. She's a, she's, she's an Australian girl and she is an incredible entrepreneur and she, mm. you know, she, this kind of Instagram influencer, um, you know, she, you can subscribe to her program and, you know, it's nutrition and workouts and they're all, you know, generally home workouts. Um, and she's in her beautiful home and she's a beautiful girl and she's, everything is kind of picture perfect. Mm. And so, <clears throat> you know, I see these, you know, they come up on my feed and, you know, I, I often wonder, okay, you know, she is an incredible photographer and a stylist and a, you know, a, what do you call it, like a stager, mm -hmm. right? And um, so a lot of, you know, generally women are super attracted to that because it's like the perfect yeah. life, look, look, mm -hmm. yeah, atmosphere that she's in. And so she's making a lot of money. She's, you know, her career is going hard mm -hmm. and I wonder is this sustainable yeah it's a good question I, I think the the fitness influencers have like I think there's um, like with everything it comes with good and bad but um, I'm I think it's just always good that people get motivated and kind of doing something because just too many people are not doing anything mm -hmm. um, and um, like in, in this case with the um, with these the guys it's like yeah it's, it's a it's a one it's a it's a TV show right it's, it's not it's not hundred it's not hundred percent real what you see and even like if you look at like our social media and so on uh, you only see this part of everything that mm -hmm. everyone is doing and and uh, like yeah and people can be very judgmental on, on so small things fractions mm -hmm. that they see um, and I think again I, I think like these um, uh, I don't know fitness influencers so on they usually get some kind of they have some niche mm -hmm. and and that niche, you know, they shrink there and they have a small community and mm -hmm. people get excited and do that do that for a while and then, you know, they, right. they go on uh, yeah. with whatever. And I think this is, uh, again, not a, uh, it's not like it, it's for us, it's also not like really a competition in that mm -hmm. sense that it's also a good warm up for, for you know, then when you start to want to, you know, get to next level, and yeah. that's usually, usually it's a, some kind of, um, you know, CrossFit gym or so. But um, yeah, I'm I'm just happy if people can get, you know, doing something. And then the only thing that I don't really like a lot is these, um, uh, let's say fitness apps that just play on your uh, bad conscience yeah uh, and that um, and I'm not going to name any names but there are definitely like a lot of um, things in the fitness industry like providers that know that if we can sell on people's bad conscience mm -hmm. and have a subscription um, we can do this for years and having that ticking in the background without actually providing anything. Right. And uh, like the normal global gyms are usually uh, a part of this problem in my sense that they sell memberships and provide access to the gym or you know the space. And um, they know their max. They know that you know ninety five percent of all our members will not show up. And this is our business model. Yeah. Um, and there's no other business where you could really do that. Right. <laughs> so, and this kind of hurts, I would say, the rep 
reputation of the, of the fitness industry because there are people are then like, well, I don't know if I'm going to sign up for a, you know, this kind of membership because it's so expensive right. uh, to do a CrossFit membership because it's like just 20 euros at the fitness gym, like, and there you have like three times the more equipment, yeah, and and so on, and uh, and yeah, so they're. Com- I'm co- comparing like apples to pears there. It's 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 not really a com- comparison, but the mindset is still there. And for many of us, uh, the mindset of a gym is still a global gym, which means access to space. Right. And and it gets you get this dissonance between like why is the CrossFit gym so much more expensive than this mm-hmm. access to the place? Yeah. Well, I think you know, and I think what. I'll, I'll just say, like, I'll tout our gym that, you know, the fact that, like, we, um, I think, like, what, what you've done so well is that, like, you see members as, like, you know, each very individual person, and because our community is smaller, you can really hone in on and see, you know, okay, this person hasn't come here for, you know, a week or so, like, give them a call, see where they're at, um, and, um, so, so you're working on, you know, like behavioral change also. Um, and where I think, you know, like a global gym is, is not caring if somebody has, they don't, they don't give a shit if somebody doesn't come for a couple weeks. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, they're not going to check in. Um, same with these apps. They, well, they, they know exactly by the numbers that you're going to be a member for <clears throat> five years yeah. without and showing up three times. Yeah. <clears throat> or maybe you know they have some different stats, but they know uh, like base basic length will be about five years, mm-hmm. and because you're just paying twenty euros a month, right? Um, it's it's uh, some low enough that you will not care. Yeah, yeah, that's what happened to me mm. every month for like a good year. <laughs> twenty euros was coming out of you know my bank account from you know the gym that I had a membership to, and uh, one day I was like. Today I have to write them an email, but yeah, it was it was twenty euros. Yeah, twenty euros, you know, is like not it, it's it's not much. And then you might sit down and you're like, okay, I'm gonna write now, and then you think, I might go next month. Right. And then then you don't. Yeah. Uh, and yeah. then it's like suddenly worth those twenty euros if you go once or twice. Right. And yeah, you you love the sauna and everything, and uh, like understand me correctly. I would. Uh, I also love to go to the sauna and mm-hmm. and and, uh, and uh, you know do the lifting and so on. But it's definitely uh, also from own experience. Like it's definitely nothing. Um, it doesn't motivate me right. uh, at all as much. Right. Uh, it is. Uh, yeah, it's a different thing. It's. Um, it, it has a, spe- a space and a spot that, yeah, I'm, I'm not definitely not going to have, you know, the same kind of development and mm-hmm. uh, um, I'm most likely going to work on all the things I already like and, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, right. and then I'm going to lose my motivation and, um, yeah, the behavior behavioral change is probably very low and yeah. I think the stats are something like that, four to five percent of the gym o- um, gym membership owner actually go and see results right yeah and uh, i like to hope that we have kind of the opposite uh, numbers we have about 90 to 95 percent depending on how many people are traveling at in the month but like 99 percent of people showing up every month and the same percentage having like uh, you know uh, some kind of development and mm-hmm. new achievement going on and what we uh, kind of discovered also is that people that train less uh, also lose the motiv- motivation faster. So um, one way to kind of you know being able to to uh, be sure that people are seeing results, keeping motivation. Uh, one key point uh, has been now like the last year is to to uh, convince people to do three to four times a week of training with us. Mm-hmm. And uh, 
and that seems to be like a very good uh, inner flow, like a beginner to have. Yeah. Um, and to be committed to that to start with, and then mm-hmm. then it gets you know it gets very good. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I think when you when you sign up to for a CrossFit box, it's obviously like the I mean even if you don't know what you're walking into, like I did, you still you still know you're not signing up for a McFit membership. Mm-hmm. So you already have that kind of awareness, hopefully, um, and that it is a, a group fitness class, right? Unless you decide to go the PT route. But like, um, but I think, my, my train of thought but I so I think like already the the idea or like the want to change you know behavior patterns is already kind of in fruition whereas I think it, it I mean it's, it's really easy to just you know you know scroll through your phone and find a, like a cute girl or a cute guy and be like oh like okay they do sit-ups they do you know push-ups and you know I've got a couple of dumbbells so like I'll just click on that and um you know whatever the subscription you know payment is a month but it's like is that going to change your behavior over long term Mm -hmm. Uh, I think the um so to look at these like fitness apps my microphone Mm -hmm. um these fitness apps um uh influencers so on it's usually you buy some kind of package or mm-hmm. a program and uh, like the best program in the world is the program that you follow mm-hmm. meaning if you can stick to it you will see results mm-hmm. and um, I definitely think uh, like m- many of these programs are are really good I mean they're tested on, on mm-hmm. a lot of people um, but the people that actually end up doing them are very few mm-hmm. it's the kind of the same appearance as the gym do you mean like doing it kind of to completion? Yeah. Do you mean okay? Yeah. yeah. So doing like a six weeks program at home, you will end up doing one half week, and then you kind of right. And and the same thing here is like the the program, because it's not specified to you. It's gonna, um, you know, you will, um, yeah, you will, uh, you know, it's not specifically adapted to you and so on so you, you there are many elements may, might that might not work for you and then yeah. you kind of lose interest and also it, since it's uh it's it's one program for a lot of people uh, it might like the program itself might have taken you know months to or years to develop <laughs> but you're selling it to mass market so for hundred thousand users mm-hmm. And uh, so each user, the benefit of each user only has to pay 10 euros or uh, 20 or 100 uh, uh, euros for this program. Uh, so it's a very valuable program, seemingly, but uh, it's c- completely worthless if you don't use it. Right. And uh, I think the best, like the best program you can have is, and this kind of the, the module uh, that I think will uh, that will be very successful and, and work is to have uh, some kind of combination of uh, individualized uh, packages, meaning <coughs> that uh, we create programs that are, you know, statistically tested mm-hmm. and seeing that we we see progress, but that you um, you you you. You have this framework, the package you buy. So if the, the package itself is a bit cheaper, what you need on top of that to actually get anywhere is the accountability of a coach, right? And also to see your progress. Yeah. So this means um, uh, that you know there are different approaches to this, but basically um, it can be very you know. It's very easy to implement and so on, but it's definitely um, you. You as a user, you need to have the trust in in the coach that mm-hmm. that it happens, 
and there needs to be a way to create this accountability via if it's a blog list or whatever it might be but uh, for some uh, like a very common way to do this is um, in, in the gym that um, me as a coach I give you a program mm -hmm. and okay now you have to come back each week and report to me right how it went yeah and that that usually has a very good um, uh, adherence for if you're motivated mm -hmm. if you're very demotivated you're not you're not going to do anything between those appointments and it's going to fall off mm -hmm. and um, if you uh, so the only thing that would work probably is that we we have you know three appointments a week where we actually go everything through yeah. every time because cool. otherwise you're not going to move your ass. Yeah, I mean, I know firsthand right now what it means to have kind of an accountability mm -hmm. uh, coach because I'm doing a program and a very specific program. And, you know, I, I have been blessed with self-motivation, not in every aspect of my life, but, in, but for this I do. Mm -hmm. And, but the, the, for me, the, the greatest part of it is the accountability. It's like, I want to show my coach, like, um, my, you know, my food journal for that day, right? So I'll screenshot, you know, my fitness app and, and, you know, in the, in the true coach app, you know, where I see my workouts, you know, I will put, you know, how many kilos the barbell was today, what I struggled with, just kind of a very brief note, a little video, mm -hmm. um, of something that I was doing. And so, you know, and then his feedback, even if it's like, great work mm -hmm. or thought you would push the pace a little bit more, you know, um, because it, that's so individual. He's speaking to me through the app. It's, um, that's kind of what gives me the motivation to, to work harder the next day or, or, or just do it again the next day. Mm -hmm. Um, so that the, the accountability is so important and that in itself changes behavior patterns um and um and so I, I i guess like my concern with these apps because i don't believe that they're all i i don't believe that they're bad i don't believe that they're you know the best thing in the world for us um you know it's how you use it and how and your 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 why for doing it um and you know sometimes it just comes up to the fact that like you're you know, like you said like you're traveling a lot or you know we're stuck at home and the gyms are closed um but the thing the 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 kind of the pattern that i see is that there's no individuality and it's just like generic mm -hmm. in a way and um fitness is great it gets you moving even if it you know it even if it's the idea that just sparks in your head that that's you're already on you know you're taking a step forward um but i i i, I personally don't see the longevity of these apps continuing you know to you know um create long-term success in 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 the users yeah, I mean, it's uh, definitely, it, there are tools, and uh, uh, tools are only useful if you use them. Mm -hmm. And, um, <clears throat> like, I have my tool, it's, uh, I have, it's a whoop band, and, uh, I mean, yeah, you have all the stats there, but if you're not doing anything, it's like, yeah, it's just right. going to happen. <laughs> yeah. And um, definitely, you if if you have a coach where you work uh who you work with uh these tools and so on uh then they can be really helpful mm -hmm. because your coach can really check in on your on your whoop and like mm -hmm. okay it looks like your day strain is a bit too high or you know your recovery is not that good your sleep was bad or right. it was excellent so now you really shoot it and you can do these variables where you can actually you know Really, really like nitty gritty you can prescribe like hey this week you're gonna go to bed 9 p.m every yeah. day yeah and you're gonna go up at 7 a.m mm -hmm. and 
then we're going to do all these like tests during the week, kind of our resiliency deload week. And then next week, we're going to do stressful week. You're going to go to bed like at uh, 12 p.m. and go up at 6 a.m. And we're going to stress your body uh, like deliberately. It's, it's not the best option for you as an athlete mm -hmm. uh, for performance at the moment. Mm -hmm. But we are doing these stresses, I mean, like stress tests. So your body needs doesn't get lazy and adapt because mm -hmm. this is kind of what happens when you do like a 20 minute workout every day that right. is the same as your body just adapts to it. Yeah. yeah. And your heart rate goes down and then you, you, you're just doing the same thing um, right. in the body. And um, so to kind of switch it up, uh, you, 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 you can do all these like deliberate testing with those apps and then you can see kind of how the metrics start to move. Mm -hmm and uh combine that with like how 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 is this kind of week looking if we're doing this with weightlifting combined or just with endurance or we say you were gonna have a, like a high carb diet on top of that or a very low carb diet and um, just pushing all those variables uh, but for us as like coaches we can we can develop a like like really um a nice intellectual uh plan yeah based on the in the, uh, uh, on the individual uh, mm -hmm. that we have mm -hmm. because then you do the same test on someone else and it's going to be a different reaction. Right, absolutely. And yeah. Yeah. 100% because I mean I think with the apps like it's you know when you're catering to the masses it's like th they don't have the 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 faculties to individualize, you know you know 3000 people or who however many you know um subscribers or, or members they have um cuz you're right everybody works completely differently yeah i mean from from my perspective uh, from our perspective i mean we have um i don't know probably over 100 workouts now mm -hmm. uh filmed workouts uh, you can follow on youtube and you can uh, do these workouts at home or in your gym or whatever. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, if you follow these workouts, you're going to get like very fit and, you're, uh, and so on. And from my perspective, that, w that is great. That's what, wh why we do this. Like I want to be able to reach as much people as possible, mm -hmm. but at some point my my dream and goal is to have all these people working with someone uh, to really get the max potential out of them, out of them. And not you know for getting to maybe a competition, but to uh, or to you know to compete in, in the Olympics, but um, to actually get the maximum out of their health, mm -hmm. so they actually perform the best at their work, uh, they perform the best at home. Um, and or you know as a, as a as a kid to someone like mm -hmm. uh, that's also really like uh, really something I would like to see is to you know be able to affect uh, how children develop now because the the more I see now the less fit kids are getting because they're deactivated by screens and stuff mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. um, and this might be the one thing I could, you know, uh, uh, yeah, I don't know if that, that would end, end, end this conversation, but people are a bit like screen fatigued. Um, yeah. And uh, the, this kind of can be the thing with the apps and with the Pelotons and stuff like that. It's just always screens. We're Zooming all the time. We're like all these Zoom meetings are uh, making people Werewolves. It's mm -hmm. like what the you, you don't want to have another Zoom meeting. Um, and we, I mean, for us, we don't have many Zoom meetings. We have uh, like now we with the lockdowns we started with one once a week um, with the team, <clears throat> and uh, uh, but we have these like Zoom meetings with with uh, members and so on. But what I've noticed is that so many of them like. It's just no, not another Zoom meeting, yeah. but having a phone call mm -hmm. is a different thing. Yeah. Uh, because a phone call, we can even both of us have a walk and talk. Right. And m most most of these phone calls with members, it's not about you know particularly going through like 
specific mo movement. Mm -hmm. For some people, it might be, mm -hmm. but it is actually more about like the the inner why of the training and the workouts. Yeah. Uh, and then you know, then we can build the, the movement on top of that, and then that's where we send the videos or or photo of like how the movement looks like. Yeah. But first of all, you this is like. Um, the key a aspect of that is like that we understand each other. Mm -hmm. That I understand you as a uh, as an athlete or as a member, and uh, only if I can do that, I can uh, I can help you. But also, you need to understand the, my motivation of uh, wanting to help you. And if you don't understand that, then you're not going to follow any instructions. Yeah, you just think I'm I'm making things up and. Uh, for my sake of things, but right. um, that's not my, you know, yeah. Yeah, I mean, this, this, you know, to kind of um, maybe sum it up a little bit, you know, this idea of reactants and, um, you know, the, the having the phone call can mean more to somebody than any, you know, incredible workout. Mm. Um, because I think, you know, what, with reactions, it's like people feel like they're like forced into something and then you get like pushback or resistance. Mm. And then that just ultimately leads to, to failure. And then it's just like, well, screw it, I'm not going to do it. Why do I have to? Mm. Right? That phone call will, you know, breaks, breaks that kind of, breaks that chain. I mean, the best is, is, of course, if you can meet and so on. Yeah. It's, yeah. Uh, it's not, uh, it's not very practical. Um, it's not very practical if you live in different countries. Right. And yeah. um, and so on. But um, I mean, there are many ways you can do this. And uh, like you said, you you get you're communicating through a true coach. Mm -hmm. And for some people, that is like. The, the gift from God to have this and like oh I really like that I really like to see my my improvements my metrics move and so yeah. on and for some people it's like I hate my phone I don't want to see my phone one more second uh, like I, I'm screen fatigued I, I, I don't like to you know sit and look at my phone yeah and uh, for those people there need to be uh, not another way and there are there are other ways mm -hmm. but um um, and yeah, for everyone, it's about you know to find which way is the best. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, again, the best way is the the, the the way you actually do anything. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And or as you know, to to at least just start. Yeah. I guess. Yeah, exactly. To start and uh, as I see it, also to get into. Um, get into improving your health and, and so on and maybe for those who are yeah who who are in, in this part of life where you where everything is going uh, like the in, in the right direction already where you you're getting your promotions at the job you're working your ass off and you you're you know constantly just getting a, a more wage you're you're you, you you got your awesome boyfriend or uh, or girlfriend. You got a big car now, and uh, everything is just blooming and going the right way. So you might neglect your health right now. Yeah. And for some, in some part, it, it makes sense also. Like because now you're really like grinding on this part. Mm -hmm. But it's it's too common in my eyes. I see for. And I guess I, I might belong to this avatar myself. Is suddenly you're you're hit by a brick wall where mm. you understand like I've been neg neglecting this so long and I thought I had this under control, and then it, you're you're not. And it, it is a bit of about <coughs> um, being humble about your yourself. And uh, I think, uh, like speaking from my own perspective, like uh, I was at least humble enough to. That I uh, that I was uh, I wasn't good like I wasn't healthy mm -hmm. and there was nothing you know admirable in being uh, you know 
waste, uh, not wasted, that's the wrong word, but being exhausted from, from, you know, when you're 28 or whatever, and mm -hmm. at 30, you shouldn't be exhausted about anything, right? right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you should, yeah. Or even that, like, uh, I'm, I'm getting, uh, I mean, I've talked to my, uh, my former self, but like sleeping at like noon when you're 30 or 25, I think it's just ridiculous. Like you have to fucking grow up, and mm -hmm. uh, again, like whoever is listening or <laughs> watching this, like don't take this personal. I, I'm talking to myself uh, when I was in that age, at that age. It's like, man, what were you thinking? Like, yeah, this is the best time of your life, and you're wasting it in your bed. Yeah, and uh, I still have the best time of my life, but I, I just wasted a lot of years in, mm -hmm. in where I could have been super productive. Yeah. Um, yeah, so, I, but I, I think it's a bit of the, our culture right now. We're not, you know, we're not maturing early enough, so. Yeah, that's a good point. That's <laughs> another episode. Yeah. Not maturing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. All right, mm. cool. Okay, cool. Uh, between two ferns. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Thank you. <laughs>